So here we are in UE4 and working in the third person template. So you can open that one as well if you're following along or if you have another project open, that's totally fine too. I'm going to go ahead and create a folder under content and I'll call it dot. And I've already got the assets that we're going to make down here just to give you an idea. We're going to bring in our skeletal mesh and that will automatically bring in the material from the static mesh, or I'm sorry, skeletal mesh from Maya. And then a, it'll generate a skeleton asset and a physics asset. And then later on, we're going to do some simple blueprinting just to kind of bring the dot to life. So the first thing I want to do is import that skeletal mesh. So here's my FBX. And I'll go ahead and hit open. We're not importing any animation. All of the other settings should be just fine. We do get a warning about smoothing groups. This warning is just basically the truth. I don't have smoothing groups applied to my mesh. And here we have our assets. So we see these little asterisks. Uh, that means that the assets aren't saved. I'm just gonna come up here and go to file, save all. So now those are saved up. The next thing I want to do is apply a material to this. I think I'm just going to use the one that I've already created. I'll show it to you though. So this is the material and it's pretty simple. If I click on the result node of the material, um, the material domain is surface, the blend mode is translucent, and the shading model is subsurface. And I did that just to make the, the surface look more like it's candy or gelatinous or something like that. Under translucency for the lighting mode, I have a surface translucency volume selected there. So that will enable all of these nodes that we're using. And I have a vector three parameter for the base color and the subsurface color. Scalar parameters for metallic roughness and opacity. If you wanna create a scalar parameter, you can just hold S on your keyboard and click, and that'll make a scalar parameter for you. If you want a vector parameter, which that's what these are. You just hold down V and click on your uh, mouse. And then we have um, a constant here, another scalar parameter. This is the index of refraction and a Fresnel node. And these all go into the LERP and plug into um, our refraction slot here. And that's basically it. So from here, I set up a material instance constant for that because it makes life a lot easier when you are adjusting the material. So you don't have to sit here and wait for shaders to compile. So if I open this up, I can adjust my index of refraction my metallic, like let's say I want it, if I ramp that up to one, that really turns up the metallic on the material. We can tweak our opacity and our roughness. We can also adjust our color. So if I wanted this to be green instead of red, I could do that and then maybe set the subsurface color to 
that is very white. So maybe a darker green. From here, what I'm going to do is go to my dot. I'm just going to open up my skeletal mesh, and right here is where I want to drop that material. So I'll select the material, go to my dot, and assign that. So now we have a nice candy looking surface. And we'll go ahead and save that out. I can close these other things for now. I'll go ahead and save that. And the next thing we're going to do is set up this physics asset. So in my dot folder, where my physics asset was generated. I'll just double click on this. And this is kind of where it starts. Now, one thing I'm going to do is just drop my camera speed to make it a little easier to navigate. And by default, it came in with two physics bodies. So if I hit simulate, It kind of bends where that middle joint is located and sort of falls over, which is kind of fun, but we want to make this a little more interesting and way more fun. So to do that, we need to do a custom physics body setup. And this is, the physics bodies are great. So this is where you can, you can set up all kinds of behaviors in here so that parts of a mesh or other rigged meshes such as characters and then the accessories on them such as pouches etc can be individually animated according to physics simulation instead of you know hand animating everything or using blend shapes so over here we have our skeleton tree and you can see our physics bodies are located right under the joint these physics bodies also come with constraints so what we're going to do is we'll set up our physics bodies and then we're going to tweak our constraints and that should give us behavior that you you saw in the first video Something else we have is a nice little graph down here so we can select our bodies and constraints from the nodes here. And then we have our details panel where we can adjust and tweak settings for each rigid body and constraint, or I'm sorry, physics body. For instance, uh, with the root, since the dot has a flat bottom, I would like to mimic that when it simulates. So I'm going to set this to box over here in the tools. I think the default is capsule. I'm going to set it to box. And down here, we need to hit uh, regenerate bodies. And that's going to give us a box. So it's kind of small. We're going to scale it up. And this is going to be surrounded by capsules on the low end. So those extremities that we created in Maya. So I'm going to make this box thin, but I also want to make it thick enough so that when the physics simulate, it'll stand. So this is kind of the foundation for the dot. You see what we get? It's kind of top heavy, <laughs> uh, 
but we'll be fixing that as we go along. And we have our middle joint body here. I'm going to just scale that in. And I'm using the QWERTY keys to toggle in between move, scale, and rotate. I have a head joint that I'm also going to put on this just to give the top a little more jiggle. Even though the asset is really simplified, we're going to do our best here to polish it up and make it interesting even though it's very simple. And then this will also be surrounded by physics bodies around the perimeter as well. So if I simulate now, it's just kind of a droopy dot. Well, something I'd like to do is go ahead and do a basic constraint adjustment here just to kind of give you an an intro before we get into adding a bunch of bodies and then tweaking a bunch of constraints. If I select on the root constraint, I've got some things that I can tweak. Uh, the first is linear limits, and if I change those to limited instead of free, what they were before, I can set this to something like 15. And if I simulate it, we're starting to have the first hints at jiggle, which is kind of fun. Something else I'd like to do, the angular limits here are set to limited. They may be set to free by default. You'll want to just select and make sure these are all set to limited. And I'm going to set these to something like two. That way it doesn't kind of rotate all over the place. Now this top rigid body is kind of slumping into the bottom one. So to adjust that we'll keep scrolling down and we're going to turn on linear motor and I'm going to do that in the X, Y, and Z. And I'm going to try a strength of 1500. Let's see what that gives us. So we get much nicer jiggle there. So there we have some basic jiggle. And in the next tutorial, we'll go ahead and do the rest of the physics bodies and kind of delve into a more complex physics setup.